So we talked about the hotkey, which is the draw size, which is if you hover over this, that's S. Um, another one, if you hit, if you tap spacebar, well, here, here's the thing. If you tap S, it's going to bring up the draw size, and then you can change it, and then you let go. Uh, the spacebar menu is a push and hold. So you're going to tap the spacebar and hold it, and this will bring up a whole cool menu of uh, uh, stuff you can use. And so here's your move scale and rotates that are over there. And here's your see as I roll over them, they're actually rolling over on the right as well. Um, you can turn your polyframe on and, on and off in here. You can go move scale and rotate while you're in here. Um, the stuff we've been talking about is your draw size. You can change your draw size while you're in this menu as well as your Z intensity. So it's just kind of a one-stop shop for everything that's up here. So you're not constantly having to go all over your interface here. You can just kind of hit your space bar and uh, you can go grab a different brush, grab a different primitive if you want to, uh, change your alphas, uh, stroke styles, which we're going to get into later. Draw size, Z intensity, all that good stuff. So. Um, know that that menu is also available to you. I don't tend to use it that often, but you know, now that I look at it, maybe I should use it more because there's a lot of good stuff in here. So now let's say we love this object where we want to keep it, we want to keep sculpting on it, we want to keep doing more cool stuff to it, but we got to go to a different class, uh, we got to go to work, so I'm going to save this for later. One thing you can do that as you're working, what I like to do is just hit quick save, which the hotkey for that is nine, because instead of going to file save as and saving iteratively, I'll just use this quick save folder. So if I hit comma and then go to my quick saves, every time I've hit quick save, they'll show up in here. So as I'm kind of working iteratively and I'm not going anywhere, I'll just hit quick save. However, if I want to save iteratively, uh, just for something to back up on a source depot or just to kind of peace of mind if something crashes or something gets corrupted, what you can do is you can do tool save as. Now we've talked a little bit about file save as, which is saving your Z project and for now, we're going to keep it simple. Let's just save our tool. So the tool is going to be tool save as. It's going to save a Z tool. And basically, anything that we've painted on our tool, any sculpting we've done on our tool, anything over here in the tool menu, like anything, uh, sub tools we have, layers we've made, uh, painting we've, uh, poly painting we've done, UV maps, texture maps, those are all going to be saved with the Z tool. And it's only going to save what's selected. So now I have this. Uh, let's call this our navigation sphere. We're going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Tool, Save As. And let's just throw this right on the desktop here. And we'll call this our navigation sphere. Now, again, the Save As type is Z Tool. That's just going to be the default. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And now we've saved our Z tool. If by chance you've accidentally gone out of edit mode, you've fat finger the T key and you're dragging stuff out, I think we've talked about this before. All you got to do is hit control N. You haven't lost anything. All you have to do is go back here to your tool menu. If you click on it, you've got your primitives, and oh, here's our navigation sphere. We've saved it. Drag it out again, go into edit mode. You can go ahead and keep working. Or if you've gone home or you've gone to work and you've uh, turned, down, turned off ZBrush and you want to launch ZBrush back up and load up your tool, let's go ahead and initialize ZBrush. So we got home from work and now we want to play a little bit more in ZBrush. Uh, we got to go grab that tool again. So I'm going to go over here to load tool, and you're just going to navigate to where you put it, which in my case is just on my desktop here. And I got it sorted by date modified, so I'm going to go here to my navigation sphere. I'm just going to double click that, and I've got my navigation sphere loaded up. Now, of course, if I click and drag on my document, it's going to be dragging out copies. I'm going to hit Control N, drag one out, hit T or go into edit mode, and now I'm right back where I started with this fabulous Z tool um, that I've saved. Now I wouldn't necessarily su necessarily suggest doing this, but if you the last time you hit quick save, you know if I go over here and hit quick save, it's going to save a quick save copy here. If you want to, you can actually shut down ZBrush, launch it back up, open up your spotlight, and the last quick save will be in here because it's just going to save iterative quick saves. Uh, and again, if you go to preferences, quick save, you're going to see the the quick save files. You can crank this up to as uh, as high as it goes. I keep it at 10, but you can go ahead and just double click this. And that'll launch the whole Z project, which basically saves a whole snapshot of your entire uh, working space here with the tool loaded, ready to go. So either way is fine. Just to play it safe, I like to save a tool out just to, just to kind of have things nice and organized. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, actually, is if I go out of edit mode, control N to clear my canvas, I've got my simple brush here. You're going to see by default, usually, there's a drag rec stroke applied after you've been playing with Z tools. That's basically uh, a different stroke. We're going to get to that. I'm going to hit control N. What that comes in, where that comes into play is if you grab your navigation sphere and you click and drag, it's actually doing a drag rec stroke. If you change the stroke, it'll actually do, you know, this. Uh, this is dot stroke, and uh, there's lots of cool stuff in here. We're not going to get to them yet. Um, but by default, drag rec is when you drag rec out a uh, new poly 
something to play with your tool drag rect out edit mode and start editing so just thought i'd bring that up just in case you notice that and one more recovery file I want to talk about, because it happens occasionally, uh, isn't your quick save, but it's actually a ZBrush recovery file. So if you're ever playing with your Z tool over here and all of a sudden ZBrush freezes and, and then it kind of does some thinking and then it shuts down, uh, sometimes what will happen is when you restart ZBrush, it'll say, hey, go to the last quick save file. So this will be like you've only lost 20 minutes of work maximum. Occasionally, however, it'll actually save that Z tool that it crashed on and where that is and it's different from a quick save a quick save is actually a Z project see how it's quick save number 41854-ZPR that's a Z project it takes a snapshot of your entire your document the position of the Z tool on the document all your tools that you have loaded uh, so that's cool um, however if you go over here to the ZBrush tab and you go to recovered files this will be the last object that crashed on you now sometimes you know, you'll be working and it'll just blink out of existence. Probably it didn't save your tool. Sorry about that. You lost up to 20 minutes of work or however uh, the max duration is on your quick save files. Occasionally it'll sit there and think and it'll go, hey, sorry, ZBrush crashed. Um, and then when you launch up ZBrush, it'll say, hey, go use your last quick save. Occasionally go to the ZBrush tab, recovered files, and just go to this recovered tool and double click that. That's going to load up the last crash tool uh, that I have and actually I don't want to show you that because that's not something we need to be looking at so I'm going to go out of edit mode and control N so that is our last recovered tool sometimes it'll save it sometimes it won't and now that we're talking about it see if you double click this little up arrow that'll go into these uh, ZBrush folders just really quick let's go into the brush area I'm gonna click this little four dotted thing over here that makes it all available to us. If we go into here, we can go into like the deco brushes. These are decoration brushes. You can go and look at those. You can click, uh, double click this up arrow. So that's how you kind of navigate through here. We've talked a little bit about moving left and right, but we haven't really talked about double clicking in here, going and grabbing one of these and then double clicking up. And one more basic thing before we head out and start getting into the, the meat of ZBrush is preferences. So, and dragging dock, docking menus. Um, by default, I believe you'll probably have material over here. Honestly, I don't use material all that much. I actually use my brush options a lot more just to have it docked over to the side. And this is real estate. So I want to make sure everything that's up on ZBrush makes sense to be there. Um, for a long, for a lot of time, I don't really use materials all that much. I mean, I do. I'll switch them out, but I don't need a whole docking side dedicated to my material setting. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to modify ZBrush's interface just a little bit, save a configuration file so that every time I load up ZBrush, what I want to have up on my screen is what I want to have up on my screen. So what I'm going to do is go to this material menu up here, and you're going to see this little, it's a circle with an arrow in it. Uh, if you tap that, it'll actually get rid of that menu. Now it doesn't delete the menu, it's still over here. So if you go over here to your, and these are in alphabetical order, so in the M area, you've got your material here. If you click that dot, and you can kind of drag it around, you can go and dock it over here in your docking station. You can minimize this divider by clicking on those little double arrows. And then once you have this little divider area open, it's basically a little docking palette area. And you can click and drag any of these. You can click and drag this one, and you pick or you click and drag this one. You can drag as many as you want to over here. If you want to get rid of one, again, just tap that circle, and that'll get rid of it. Um, so what I, like I said, what I like to do over here is put my brush settings. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that circle, and I'm going to go to here in my brush, grab that circle, launch it over here. If I want my brush to always be loaded over here and my tools to always, always be loaded over here, all I need to do is go to Preferences, Config, hit Store Config, and uh, the hotkey for that is Control Shift I. It'll say, okay, it's been saved successfully and re restored every time you start ZBrush. So every time I start ZBrush, my brush menu will be docked over here, my tool menu will be docked over here, and I'm ready to go. Um, before we leave, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, menu navigation. So we've talked a little bit about tools, and I'm going to actually hit Preferences Initialize so we can get rid of that tool you shouldn't be looking at right now. And let's go ahead and load up our navigation sphere. Sphere. Double click. There we go. Drag that out. Go into edit mode. So uh, with our brush here and our tools here, when we start really getting deep into these tools, we're going to start making custom menus. You don't have to do this, but let's say you want to look at your sub tools. So if I click sub tool, it's going to open the sub tool menu. And there's a lot of stuff in here. So if I click split, it's going to open up split options, merge options. Now, if I'm just clicking once, it's going to open that menu and close the other one. If I want to keep a menu open, I hold down shift and then click a menu and that'll keep them open as I'm navigating. So they're both useful. Usually I like to have the menus I want open 
when I say open, if I end up I want to close them, I'll just go in back and manually close them just by tapping them again. Um, so hold down Shift to keep them open as you're opening multiple menus. Uh, same thing for down here. So if I open up masking, it's going to open up my masking options. But then if I open up deformation, it's going to open up deformation, close my masking options. If I want them both to stay open, hold down Shift. That'll keep my masking and deformation menus open. And as I start opening these menus, let's open a few more. Sub tool, I'm holding down Shift. And uh, what's another useful one? Like polygroups is useful. You're going to see this thing starts getting really, really long and cumbersome. And even within these, you know, you're going to be in here and there's going to be a lot of stuff and options for you to uh, start messing with. So this is how you navigate. You click a menu, you click a sub-menu. So we've got, here's our big top menu. So I can go ahead and close all that down. If I click that open, that's going to open my big menu. I can click and drag to navigate. These are my sub-menus. So I can go ahead and close these down just by tapping them. I can tap them open and that'll open that sub-menu and close the rest. Or if I hold down shift, That'll open that menu and keep the other one open. And we're still navigating. Within this subtool submenu, we've got another submenu, which we have split, merge, remesh, project, and extract. Uh, if I hold down shift, that'll open these up and keep them open. If I let, don't hold down shift and just click them, that, they'll kind of open and close depending on what I have clicked. So we've got tool menu. We've got a subtool submenu. And within the subtool submenu, we've got more submenus with more options in them. And you can, I guess, Assume you can nest those as far as you want, and we'll make our own custom menus that do this as well. So we've done that. We've saved a config, so every time we start up ZBrush, we'll have our tools and our brush dock. Same thing over on this side. If I open these up, you've got a lot of options in here. You click and you can drag. And even if you're up here, like say the uh, draw menu, you click and you drag to move around. So all of ZBrush is pretty consistent as far as how you navigate your menus. So, uh, now that we've talked about the basic ZBrush interface, basic sculpting, basic options, I think we've kind of set up ZBrush so we can actually start doing the fun stuff. So uh, let's hop right into that.